everyone, I'm Jeremy with LiveX, and today we are unboxing the FreeSpeak Transceiver Splitter. This is part of our larger uh, FreeSpeak 2 system that we are unboxing over a series of videos, and this adds a lot of great functionality to the system. So let's get into it, and I'll tell you more about it. I already cut the tape because I didn't even see the sticker right here and I wanted to see what this was and it turned out it was the splitter. So let's unbox this. I didn't go any further than right here. Then I stopped and I said, oh man, it's the splitter. Um, comes with the warranty registration and a quick start guide. Clearcom's great with their quick start guide. Quick th shout out to Clearcom for using a nice quality paper. I don't know why, it's just something I've noticed and it makes it feel like even though you get a really you know, simple stapled manual here, it's high quality, I like it. Let's put that aside here. Again, another uh, power adapter here. I don't need to uh, unwrap this to know that that's what this is. And like all of our products, um, the IEC cables for uh, our region are actually boxed up all together for all of our products here. So it does come with an IEC cable, it's just not in this box for this instance. Set that aside here and let's take this out. So nothing else in here, I'm gonna put this aside. And what you notice is there's definitely design language to uh, the ClearCom system. Uh, this almost looks like a transceiver, but it's not. It is the splitter. So starting off on the bottom here, same great threading options here. You have a 5 8 and a 3 8 thread, uh, mic stands, and then more like lighting tripod stands, a lot of uh, flexibility with the mounting here, as well as uh, the ability to wall mount. There are little holes here for that. Um, and then you can unscrew this and there's a dip switch down here to get into some additional little hidden features about this. Well, hidden features is one way to put it, but it just, it just changes the configuration of how the splitter works. You usually don't need to touch that. The default settings will usually work. On the back, we get to the connections. So we have our power input here. We have what I believe is going to be an SFP input. Yep, so this is a fiber input and a RJ45 uh, CAT6 input. These are both um, to connect this to the base station. So on the back of the base station, there are uh, four ports, two SFPs and two RJ45s, and you can run up to two splitters. So that's up to 10 transceivers on a system. Um, so you'll plug one of the two in. Um, because it's a base station to transceiver, it actually runs longer cables through than like a normal like CAT6 run. So uh, even though this is CAT6, you can actually go longer than the uh, normal recommended length here. But I often use the fiber anyway for SFP to go even farther. So uh, a lot of utility with those two connections gives you a lot of flexibility. And then here we have our outputs for all of our transceivers. And these are all RJ45 connections. So again, you can run it a little bit longer than a normal RJ45 or CAT6, CAT5 cable, whatever you have, uh, depending on the cable quality, of course. So up to five uh, outputs to transceivers here. And uh, like I said, this is really what unlocks a ton of capacity in your system. Get two of these and you're gonna have no problem uh, uh, getting all 25 belt packs on the system in a bunch of different locations, whether you're putting a, a bunch of transceivers right by your um, control area, or you need to spread them out across a venue so you don't have any dropouts when people are moving around. This is what really unlocks that capacity for you to use your system. That's all we have for this. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments down below, because even though I just unboxed this one, we have an identical system in New York that I use all the time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.